pick it up and read it because I think you know Bill's writing is beautiful and uh, it's beautifully written. And so uh, there are parts of it where I really get choked up. So I'll do my best, okay? So I'm so glad you're here with me to hear this because it's really very special to me. Okay, here goes. Phyllis Amon saw the storm coming. Her decades of work in nursing homes gave her what sailors call a weather's eye. Unlike so many others, Phyllis trained herself to see and seek to understand what was really going on in long-term care. As the COVID-19 pandemic approached, she foresaw the terrible impact it would have on staff and elders alike. She also understood that this terrible tragedy would open the way to change, a transformation that moves us all closer to a person-centered approach to care and caring. She quotes the late John Lewison early in her book, my philosophy is very simple. When you see something that is not right, not fair, not just, stand up, speak up, and speak out. Simple? Yes. Hard to do? Yes, this is very hard to do. Speaking up requires you to pay a price. It means leaving the sheltered bay of conventional wisdom. It forces us to surrender the comfortable collegiality that emerges whenever and wherever people agree, without ever speaking as agreement, without ever, ever speaking it aloud, to pretend that everything is fine. In this case, going along means pretending that people are not suffering. They are not dying. The people caring for them are not underpaid and overworked. As you can easily imagine, there are many people working in the field of long-term care who would very much prefer that you stop reading right now. I say keep reading. Read like your life depends on it. Because someday it might. For millions of people, the defects of long-term care are matters of life and death right now. A weather eye sees storms when they are still over the horizon, but they also detect fair weather before it appears. The most important parts of this book follow the thinking, innovation, and action that has long marked the orphan's work with elders living in nursing homes. As the book unfolds, we find clear, credible guidance on how to introduce mindfulness into nursing and home environments, and to do so in ways that benefit both staff and elders. Health and wellness are often mistaken for an absence of disease or injury. In fact, there would be a few, few people alive today and almost no elders who could pass that test. Phyllis makes the case that true wellness consists of learning how to live with the body and mind we have today, and that healing must be a forward-looking process that seeks new ways of living in response to the changes that time and aging bring to our lives. Sorry. The high point of this book for me it is careful consideration of a person-centered approach to care and caregiving. She corrects a common misconception that person-centered care is all about patients. Actually, it's all about people. Like all positive changes, it begins with leadership. Before any organization can hope to deliver person-centered care to elders, its leadership must deliver person-centered care to the staff. This means addressing structural issues that cause burnout, pessimism, and cynicism. Unfair treatment of staff, an equitable distribution of workloads, a lack of education and training, all contribute to toxic long-term care environments. While it is common practice to blame the staff, the responsibility for this lies at the feet of the organization's leadership. We know how to do better, and the time for transformation has arrived. 
Phyllis concludes this work with a careful consideration of how ageism damages the well-being of people of all ages. We are all participants in an ageist society, which makes no secret of its belief that older people, while lovable when they are related to us, actually are actually a plague on society. People say we can't afford old people, that they are a drain on society, that their insatiable demands will bankrupt our government's treasury. Phyllis sees it quite differently. She knows that elders are essential to the functioning of our society and understands that when we cannot muster the courage to offer dignity, kindness, and tenderness to the most vulnerable of Americans, millions of older people, we reveal much about who we really are. The time for change has come. And this book is your guide to how we can repair the world by choosing to follow the path of life and goodness. Now let's get started. Dr. Bill